All right, guys, welcome back. Another podcast episode we're going to jump right into. Um, this one is actually, it came as an email. And so it was a, a message that I got that it's kind of connection. Like we, we get a lot of feedback on hold conditioning, a lot of positive feedback, feedback on, on hold conditioning. A lot of people that are interested in, in doing it as maybe an alternative to other ways that are out there from like along the force fetch lines. Um, we're not going to get into that real specifically in conversation because we've talked a lot about it in the past and there's a lot of podcasts that we've touched on it. This is a, a branch off of that tree, if you will. Um, it was a question that came in and it's, it, it touches on it. Hold is going to become part of it. Um, but let's get right into it here. It's a, here he is. He says, uh, my name is guy. And so this guy is Guy. Guy says, uh, I've been watching your videos obsessively for the last few days on YouTube, which I thank him for that. Um, I thank all of you guys who are, who are following along with us on our journey of growing in these different spaces. One of our major pushes, and it's one of Ben's super high priorities, is to try to provide and, and add to the content that we're using uh, or putting out on YouTube. So Guy found us through YouTube, which is interesting because I'm getting a lot more messages um, these days uh, generated from YouTube following. So it, it says, it, it, so here's, this is a total sidetrack to it, but it's exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, we're using different platforms like Instagram, Facebook, um, our website, YouTube, in a lot of ways they're orchestrated to work together in a lot of ways that and in a lot of ways there are they're different because um, they set up differently and they're they're better for us to you utilize um, in certain ways and YouTube is one that can, we can get pretty involved in pretty deep in because again it's one of these things where people choose to be there as a rule they're searching it out or, or searching out that topic at least and then they can choose to watch what they want um, where social media is sometimes a little bit different where if depending on if it's sponsored or if it's suggested or recommended, if it's popping up in people's feeds for different reasons, um, again, it, every, they all work a little bit differently. But YouTube is one that I like because I feel like we get a, we have the opportunity to really share a lot of information. Um, so this guy found us on YouTube and, and a lot of messages recently have been coming generated because of YouTube. So I think it, I do think it's interesting. It's maybe coincidental, but um, that's a plug for YouTube indirectly as well, because I think that if you're interested in our podcast, if you're listening to our podcast, I ask you to watch our YouTube channel. I think you'll get double the um, return on it. If you're watching our YouTube, I'm going to start asking you to listen to our podcast because I think you'll get double the return on it. And the reason I say double the return is it's because it's different. It's not the same. Um, there's a lot of overlapping, but it's just, it's not the same. So anyway, this guy is watching videos obsessively for the last few days on YouTube. Can't believe how good they are, and I think they're amazing and exactly what I'm looking for. So I say that it makes me feel good because it does make me feel good. Um, I appreciate his kind words. Now, to his question, he says, I have a six-month-old puppy, pretty damn good, but she's one flaw. When I throw something for him, he'll only bring it back 25 or 50% of the way that then he just lays down with it. He doesn't chew it, just wants to lay down and not bring it to my hand. I realize after watching your videos, I've messed up somewhere along the way. So I'm thinking about the right thing to do is probably start hold conditioning. But I do have a few questions. First off, I don't think he's teething anymore. But do you think he's still too young? If he's too young, what should I do? No retrieving, no holding, no carrying at all? As a note, if I gave him the dummy or bumpy to hold, bumper to hold on to, He'd go for a two mile walk with it with me and happily do that. He he just lays down along the way and probably never bring it to hand if I asked for it. So I'm a little bit confused by that, but we'll get into it in a second. He said, thank you so much. Hope you have a great day. I'm guessing by your phone number. So I'm not sure who he found our phone number. He must have seen our phone number. Uh, you're located on the internet that you must be a Packers fan. Good luck this weekend to my own satisfaction. I shouldn't say it's satisfaction, but I'm not a Packers fan. Uh, Packers got beat last night. 
it was it's depressing in our area it's devastating in households including ours because i do live with packer fans we're not going to hang up on the, the playoffs but uh it would have been nice to see the packers win you're you know mark my word when i said that one because uh mark it down because Although I am not a Packers fan, I would have preferred to see the Packers in the Super Bowl. I think it would have been a reason to watch. It would have been much more entertaining. It also would be good for our, for our local um, morale here in, in Northeast Wisconsin. But, you know, we're not going to let sports dictate our success and happiness. So, um, not a Packers fan. We're just clearing that up right away. Now, let's dig into the question. The question that I had regarding my question back would be, you, you know, I'm, I'm a little confused where the line says, as a note, if I gave him the dummy or bumper to hold to go for a two mile, he'd go for a two mile walk with it, happily do that. He just lays down along the way and probably never bring it to hand if I asked for it. Here's the simple. So it sounds to me like you're saying he like he doesn't mind carrying stuff around. He'll carry that dummy for a two mile walk, but he's going to lay down and he won't bring it back to you. I'm not recommending you do this, but if that were a, a situation, I may put the dummy in the dog's mouth if he likes to carry it around and take him for a walk on lead and, and work on heel position. So there's a difference between taking him for a walk and going for a walk and letting him run around at his own will. That's not taking him for a walk. That's going for a walk with him, quartering, casting, free ranging him a bit. I think those are very valuable things to do, and I like doing them with our dogs. It allows dogs to create some understanding of the concept of independence. With I, I okay, so I'll back up. I like doing that with dogs when we can create this feeling of independence, confidence, boldness in new environments, investigating, uh, exploring, if you will, with young dogs. I love doing that, provided we don't allow for bad habits or undesirable things to form and strengthen, which would be the inability to bring, get them back to us. So recall is the answer there. You know, the issue when we boil this all down, we go back up to the very beginning and we hear six month old puppy, he'll only bring it halfway back. So part of the issue is maybe recall as I'm reading this because recall isn't come halfway back to me. Recall is you come back to me wherever you are. If you're 100 yards out and I call you, you come back. If you're 25 yards out and I call you, you come back. It's not if you're 100 yards out, you come back to 50 or 25 out, you come back to 12. Like it's all the way back. So recall is possibly part of the issue. Recall is one that I just I just had a, another question that I was answering. I think it was an email, but I'm not sure. Email or an Instagram message, I think it was. Maybe it might have been Facebook, but I t when it was a gal, and one of the things we talked about was, quite honestly, the issue is, one of the major issues you're having is not being able to just get the dog back to you. And so I think, the, I think her question was something about going to the bathroom and when should I put the dog on lead and when should I start teaching the dog to go on heel because the dog was like 12 weeks old and wouldn't come back and we'd take it out to the bathroom and it'd run off. And I said, well, recall is the issue. It's not a question about when do we put the dog on lead or how do we start teaching heel work. That's maybe part of it in the soon to come future. But the bottom line is the major issue, the symptom is uh, doesn't come back. The problem, the ailment is recall. In this case, I could say there is a probably a little bit of an issue with recall. I'd be surprised if at six months with a dog that likes to run back 50% of the time or 25% of the time with the dummy when you make a retrieve, I doubt you would say he's 100% on recall. So that is one of the things I'm going to say, guy, you need to work on. You got to get the dog back to you confidently. And you got to get the dog back to you without making a big scene of it. You got to get the dog to understand the idea and the concept of when you say come here, it means come right to me, sit down, and I'll praise you. That is part of going to be the fix. It's The thing about this, the bigger thing, another big thing about this when I take a 10,000 foot view of it is the idea that the dog's six months old. It's really a little puppy. Uh, it might be bigger in size, but it's a real little puppy mentally. And so I spend usually for the first 10 to 12 months of having a dog. Now take that into consideration that I get them when they're seven or eight weeks old. So they're about two months old when I get them. I spend the first 10 to 12 focused 90% of my time is focused on foundation. And a lot of people will go, no way, you don't spend that much time on foundation. 100% I do. 
I spend a ton of time on it because without it, I can't do any of the hunting stuff. I cannot, we did a, we're st doing this new series uh, with this dog named Callie, a yellow dog. If you've watched us on Instagram or uh, Facebook, you probably have seen her a little bit. We haven't started posting the series. We've started filming it. We're going to be posting it real soon. Quite honestly, the one thing holding me up is I can't think of a good name for it, but we'll get over that. But the thing with Callie is a hundred percent of the drills that we've been doing, I can't, she's 15 months old. I cannot do those drills if she doesn't have a great foundation. She recalls beautifully. I didn't do that. I got her. She had that. We didn't allow it to, we're not going to allow it to fade. We're not going to allow it to erode. We're not going to allow it to get soft. We're going to hopefully continue to strengthen and build off of it. Because she has a good foundation, I'm starting to build a nice building on top of her. And that's going to be more hunting stuff. But without, but it's been, she's 15 months old. So for 10, 12, 13 months, I guarantee you where she came from, there was a major emphasis put on foundation. I couldn't do the drills I'm doing with her without it. So you got to remember at six months old, you got a puppy that you've probably only had for four months at the most. And of those four months, quite honestly, how much of that is like, truly able to like put good solid stuff into the puppy now you yes 100 percent of that time you can put good solid stuff in the puppy but quite honestly what does it amount to with a 10 week old puppy it's having them not poop and pee in your house it's getting them to follow you around in the yard which can be recall like that's how i teach recall i walk around and the puppies don't want to be left alone and they follow me and all the while I'm sitting there going beep, 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 on the whistle and calling them to me. And when they get to me, I don't just blow them off and pretend that that's no big deal. I, I allow them to understand this is what he wants me to do. So we're going to get the dogs to come to us and then finish it. I talk about it in the Cali episode, one of the Cali episodes that we done that we filmed already. I talk about how when I, she's developing range. I'm working on developing a range with her. Go out a certain distance and don't go any further because I can't shoot any further than that. But she also she struggles with the idea of getting a range and not getting off of my side. She likes to heal right next to me or she likes to run beyond range. So I need to figure out how to get her in between. So one of the things I've been doing is this. As she gets out too far, I stop her. I call her back to me. I'm not going to allow... So she knows that when I say come here, she comes to you. If I get in this habit of saying, that's far enough, Callie, stop there, come back, and she comes back, and she gets to about halfway to me, and then I just keep walking on and not, not finishing that command out, not getting her to me, telling her she's done well, and then moving on to the next thing. If I get in this habit where I call her back, and about halfway back, I just start walking, and I don't pay attention to her anymore, and she just gets to kind of come and get close, and then go back to doing her thing, all of a sudden, recall is going to mean... And get close to them. Get, start coming back to them. Not all the way to and finish. You have to finish stuff with dogs or it doesn't make sense for them. So when I say recall, I'm going to call a dog and they're going to come to me. And I'm going to get them to finish it with, an ex, with a period. Like it's a sentence. You can't write a sentence and never end it. Or it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. Imagine if I read this entire email without any punctuation. My name is Guy and I've been watching your videos obsessively for the last two days on YouTube. I can't believe how good they are and amazing they are exactly what I'm looking for. I have a six month old puppy that's pretty darn good, but one flaw that sometimes I throw it and he'll bring it 25, 50% of the way. He just lays down and he doesn't chew on it. He wants to lay down and he doesn't bring it back to hand. I realize after watching the videos that I messed up somewhere along the way. Like you can't process all of that information and have it make sense when there is no punctuation. So when it comes to training, put a period on things. Put an exclamation point on things. Put a comma. Put a question mark. Put something that provides context of sense to the dog of how and when things are or aren't completed. So call the dogs back. Have them sit. There's the period. You recalled to me. Good. Sit. Good. Two things came back to me to the point where I could say sit next to me. That's one good, I marked it. Then I said sit, and you sit and you put your butt down. Then I said good, and I marked it. Two periods, boom, boom. 
dog is it's crystal clear when he says here what's the next what am i supposed to do to finish this sentence come close to him when he says good that's close enough then the dog says i did it then i said sit and the dog put its butt down and i said good there's a sent there's the end of the sentence the dog goes oh, i get it that's what i'm supposed to do so recall is super important now at six months old I don't think you can have all that stuff necessarily ingrained perfectly. And I bet you, you don't guy. So I do think you got to start working on that independently. That's without a dummy in its mouth. Now the question about the teething, you said, you think he's done teething. I don't want you to think it. I want you to know it. And my question, one question I have is what did we do while he was teething? Were we retrieving then? Did that create part of the issue? I think part of the problem, part of the way to fix problems is assess how come the problem is there in the first place. If we created it, how do we uncreate it? So were we doing some retrieving in this period when he was teething? Did that turn him off of the idea of picking stuff up? Did that turn him on to the idea of laying down to maybe chew on something? I don't know if it did or didn't, I'm asking you. Those are things that you have to assess. If it did, let's understand why we have the issue we have. And now we start to fix that. Now, the idea of him, let's just say, hypothetically, let's just say he doesn't have any of those habits formed that way. Dog just doesn't like to come back all the way. Well, how come? Is it because we stole it away from him when you bring it back? Is it because, what are the reasons they doesn't want to, I want dogs to come all the way back and finish because they understand that I am going to be very happy with them. I'm going to praise them for it. I might even share it back with them. I'm, if I take it from them, I might give it back. I don't want him having this possessiveness of, I don't want to bring it back to him because all he does is take it away from me. Like that's a good reason for dogs not to come back. So what I want to do is the next question I'll have is, well, how far away is 50% of the way? How far away is 25% of the way? Are you making 100 yard retrieves and he's bringing back 50 yards and stopping? Are you bringing five yard retrieves and he's coming back two yards and stopping? I don't know if that's a consistent answer or not. So what I would do is usually when I run into problems, I say, let's simplify it. If we're making 30 yard retrieves, it's too far maybe. Let's make a 10 yard retrieve, make it a third of that. Make it so that it's three or four steps out, three or four steps back. Make it that simple because it's really easy. The further away the dog gets, the easier it is for like static to build up and dissipate the connection. It's easier for there to be a cloud in between us and the focus isn't so t razor sharp anymore, laser like. It's like a flashlight versus a laser. I want a laser. So you can't, sometimes when you get to these great distances, that fades that away, especially if we're talking about a six month old puppy, because that age alone, that immaturity is part of the cloud that helps break up the connection from us to them. So shrink it up, make it five to 10 yards tops. And then my question is, what are the options that the dog has? Now it doesn't sound like he's running off with it. So that's good. But if it's, if he's got a chance. So what I would do is because it doesn't sound like he's running off because it sounds like he understands the concept of go out and get it and br start bringing it back. He's just not finishing. What I have had a lot of success with in the past is ignoring that dog and turning and walking away from him. And so they really love it when they stop halfway and they create mom or dad to look like a fool. They, we start getting excited. I, one of the ways I get a dog back to me is I do get excited. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I build up, and if they, if I read them and that starts getting them coming to me, then I start to slow the excitement down. If they start to hold up again, I get the excitement. So it's like this, it's this game of magnetism. Do what it, do what it takes to get them to move in the right direction. And then as soon as they do, don't keep going with it. Start to lighten up a little bit. And so at the point, to the point where I don't have to do that to, to get the behavior, but that it might take that excitement to ramp them up, to get them coming towards me. And then once you get the momentum of them coming towards you, I can shut up a little bit and slow down and hopefully encourage the dog. Here's another thing, body language to the dog. If we stand up real stiff and straight and stern, if we get in an athletic stance, I've seen this before. Those are two different ways of doing it. People stand real strong and tall and they're almost intimidating. No one wants to come to you when you're like that. I've seen some people get down in like a, a linebacker stance, athletic stance, like you're guarding someone in basketball. No one wants to come rushing up to you in that, that pose, that, that body language, that gesture looks like you want to go for a run. 
makes you want, makes someone think you might tackle them, makes someone think that this is going to be kind of a fun game. Let's maybe play chase. Let's maybe come and come and get me. It's tag. We don't want that. So one of the things that I like to do with dogs that are hesitant to come to me is get right down on the ground. Get down on my knees, welcome them into me, put my arms out. It's the exact same way that I get them to come to me without something in their mouth. So again, let's back up and simplify things. If we're having an issue with a dog coming to us with something in their mouth, I ask you, can you get them to come to you without something in your mouth? And how do you do that? A lot of times it's getting down and welcoming them in. And so now if you get dogs that get used to come running back to dad, oh, he loves me up. He gives me a lot of praise. He, he's real welcoming. Physically, that looks welcoming. It's a body language thing. If you can do that without the dummy, then you do it with the dummy. The dog is going to have flashbacks of the times when he ran running up to you and you welcomed him in with the, the, without the dummy in the mouth. And now it's just, I got a dummy in my mouth is all. So when he comes in, the last thing you want to do is snatch it away from him and stand up. End the game. Like you get him in, you welcome him, you share it with them. You're not in a hurry to take it away. I don't take it away from young puppies very quickly. Watch Bella be good. Bella had the best. See, one of the things that he says, that guy says is, he likes carrying the thing around. I could walk for two miles and carry it in his mouth. That's what Bella was like. Bella loves to carry stuff, love to carry stuff. So it, take, that, take advantage of it. Don't be in a rush to pull stuff away. So don't get them in and snag stuff. Get them in, let them have it. Take it away, give it back. Take it away, give it back. Turn it into a game. Share instead of take. So I think you got to get all of that stuff going. I think I would definitely turn and go away from them. No different than recall. If dogs won't come back to me without something in their mouth, one of the best ways to get them to come to you is walk away. Hell, run away from them. And then when they start to go, where's he going? I better go. And then they start to come. Now I turn around and I get down and I welcome them all the way back to me and I tell them how good they are. I've seen so many people that get so frustrated with their dogs because they won't come back. And so then they start to get mad and then they start hollering and then they start bitching at them and then they're, God damn you, and all upset. And then the dog comes back and what do they do? Grab a hold of that dog and shake them up. I've seen guys lose their cool and do that. And my, I laugh at him and I go, next time you think you'll come back any quicker, why would he come back to you at all if that's how you respond? And some people are going to be listening to this right now and they're going to hang their head and go, oh my God, he just described me when I go into my little fits of rage when my dog doesn't listen. Now, I see this happen with young dogs. I see this happen with puppies. I'm speaking from experience. I've done it before. So don't think I'm better than you. I'm not. I've done it. I've been so mad at my dog when they come to me, I've grabbed a hold of them and yelled at them and, why don't you come to me? Because this is the guy that I'm coming back to. That's why. So I've learned over the years, I wouldn't come back to that either. I've gotten a lot better at it. It's the P word, patience. The more patience you have, the easier it is to find success with everything we're doing.